It is time now for our opening talk. Uh, we are proud to welcome a longtime champion of the independent voice and of the social and cultural power of artful cinema. Throughout her long career in film and broadcasting, including many years as director of the documentary film program at Sundance Institute, she has made it a mission to lift up diverse voices and diverse storytelling forms. And in February this year, she was appointed director of the Sundance Film Festival. Please welcome Tabitha Jackson. Thank you so much for your kind introduction and hello Carla 2020. Uh, it's, it's wonderful uh, to be here. It's a great honour to experience the passion of your purpose and the rigour of your research. Um, it's said that there are two kinds of people in this world. Uh, those who can extrapolate from incomplete data uh, today, I would like to share some fragments of my thinking. Sorry, I love that data joke. Uh, I hope you got it. Uh, today, I would like to share just some fragments uh, of thinking. Um, and I will be brief. Um, it's, it's kind of my perspective on perspectives. Um, it all started when I consulted the artist, the Australian artist, Lynette Walworth. <clears throat> about how to think about this task I had accepted, becoming the new director of the Sundance Film Festival. We talked about watching, about seeing, about what is made visible and about who is seen. We talked about the philosopher Donna Haraway, who asks, how do we see? Where do we see from? Who do we see with? And she was the person who also defined the term situated knowledges as a means of understanding that all knowledge comes from positional perspectives. Our positionality inherently determines what it is possible to know about an object of interest. Lynette and I also looked at images. And in the Atacama Desert, there is an array of 66 telescopes turned towards the stars. Alone, each one is not powerful enough to reveal the depths of the universe astronomers are seeking to know. But combined, they have the power to reveal the structures of the system we inhabit, hidden from us by distance and time. I've become obsessed with this image and obsessed with this metaphor. My conception of the film festival this year is based on it, a multiplicity of perspectives and locations, determining how we see, not just what we look at, but where we look from. So another kind of science, another metaphor. Bo Lotto, the perceptual neuroscientist, says that our perceptual systems, not just what we see, but how we look, developed because, quote, at the root of human existence is the question, what's next? To answer this question well is to survive. It resonated because once again, we find ourselves embroiled in culture wars, in uprisings, in a moment of reckoning. And in a polarized society and a narcotic state, we are engaged again in a street, a street fight for truth, for meaning and the recognition of the arts and culture as a necessary and urgent public good. We are also in the middle of a global pandemic, a planetary scale problem, a climate crisis, a planetary scale problem. So what do we need to equip ourselves with to answer the question, what next? We need planetary scale thinking. First and foremost, we need imagination. Imagination as a survival mechanism. At Sundance, we think about what we do as creating a space for imaginative possibility. And who better to do that than artists those architects of the imagination. I was struck recently by a quote from an actor, Jonathan Majors. 
He said, I believe the arts are a service industry. We doctor different things. We doctor the invisible hurt. We mend the phantom pain. I believe, and I'll say to anybody, we are essential for humanity when we all come together around the campfire or around a television and experience something together that allows us to move through the world with a bit more confidence, a bit more security, knowing that we are not alone. Well, that seems essential to me. Artists as essential workers. I'm involved in independent media and I value it because the value of independent cinema is generally located in difference, in resistance, in opposition, in alternative representations. It's the most effective mechanism, it has been said, for the transmission of ideas. And film festivals like Sundance, like so many others, form together a circuit of meaning making. The best films, one might argue controversially, are independent. They don't exist to serve interests. Independence doesn't mean the same as it did in 1981 when Robert Redford founded our institute to free artists from the creative constraints of commerce and convention and provide an alternative to the studio system in Hollywood. When one of our theatre artists was asked what independence meant to her, she said simply, freedom. So let us together imagine how we might reassert independence for our times. Independence, perhaps, free from the risk-averse constraints of market-led creativity, free to break the form, challenge the audience, experiment. Free from the reductive tyranny of only Western storytelling structures. Free to find the forms in which life is expressed in all its messy, beautiful complexity and ambiguity. Free from the benign shackles of the funders' agendas. Free to speak our own truths free from being only revenue generators and data points for platforms in a capitalist system, and free to live creative, sustainable lives as makers with a meaningful connection to our audiences. Free from the power of homogenous gatekeepers to determine who gets their work financed, seen and distributed, and free to make independent cinema, the ultimate frame of representation. In the words of Anne Bogart, those who can formulate the stories that make the world understandable will redefine the experience of those who live in it. My friend Lynette Walworth also pointed me to a quote by Wim Wenders, who said the most political decision you can make is where you direct people's eyes. She said that Vendors was speaking to filmmakers, but his message is equally relevant to those of us who have the power to draw the eyes of the world towards new visions for our future, new versions of reality, and new possibilities for an evolving humanity. So back to telescopes. Yesterday, I was chatting to Professor Peter Gallison. He's a Harvard physicist who was involved with the creation of, and also made a film about, the Event Horizon Telescope. His film, The Edge of All We Know, premiered at the amazing CPH Docs Film Festival earlier this year. The Event Horizon Telescope was built to see something that no one had ever been able to see before, a black hole. The problem, for the power required, they needed a telescope almost the size of the Earth. The solution, they harnessed telescopes at different sites around the planet, including the Alma array in the Atacama Desert I just mentioned, and made all these telescopes look simultaneously at the same thing. It was a feat of international collaboration 
that turned these separate telescopes into one giant Earth-sized machine for seeing and for understanding. Shep Dolman, the project lead, described it like this, quote, imagine taking a mirror, smashing it with a hammer and distributing these shards all over the world, then recording what happens on each of these shards and bringing them together again and reconstructing that mirror. That's what the Event Horizon Telescope was doing. The experiment was successful and in April last year, the Event Horizon Telescope captured the first ever image of a black hole. And I urge you to Google it. It's the metaphor for the festival this year, for Sundance Festival, but it's also as we engage in Carla 2020, I think a useful metaphor for our field for the industry, for the endeavor, for the movement of film and media. We talk about culture as being the mirror held up to society. So what if, my two favorite words, we can learn from the ambition, the cooperation, the global collaboration and the imagination of the Event Horizon Telescope as an industry. An individual empowered or resourced with a camera and a point of view can record an experience, a shard. If we believe in the mission of art and culture as meaning making, we as an industry have an opportunity and indeed an obligation to bring all those shards back together, to reconstruct the mirror, to gather and disseminate the meaning that is made. And in its multiplicity of perspectives, its global inclusion, I suspect we might see something that has never been visible before. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I think if anyone like me had tears in their eyes listening to this, you will be happy to hear uh, that all of these talks, of course, will be available to share very soon.